20th of the 10th, 2013, Sunday meet, Jesus the Christ Ministries. The Uniting Church had a bit of news uh, going out last night about, or was it Friday night, $37 million debt and uh, needed to pay the debt. So they started selling off uh, some of the churches underneath the congregation's feet. And uh, the congregation, some of them second and third generation, I don't know. And they were a little bit gutted on that. And so they used the cliche, well, the church is, is not bricks and mortar, you know. <laughs> I tell you what, it puts a whole new slant on it, doesn't it? it? puts a whole new look. Yeah, 37 mil, they've found themselves in debt and they have to sort it. Selling off a few buildings, not all of them, only a few. Shows you how much dough they've got tied up there. So, one elderly man stood up and he said, uh, and this is supposed to be a Christian organisation. You're selling our seats underneath us, hey? And where are they going to go? They're going to have to, these elderly people are going to have to travel, aren't they? They're going to have to go to other suburbs or something. I don't think it's really Christian, is it? But I mean, the mighty dollar has a lot of say today. And um, let's open our Bibles today at the writings of Hebrews. Hebrews. Uh, we'll go to chapter 11, eh? Hebrews 11, 20th of the 10th, 2013. Hebrews 11. Just a couple of scriptures I want to touch on before we go into the main message. Hebrews 11.15 says, And truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire something better, that is, something heavenly. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city God's preparing a city for such as these. Well, I was only reading that the other day and the Spirit was ministering to me about selfishness and the servant's heart. If they would have thought about it, you know, and truly if they had called to mind, if they had uh, started to think where they came from and considered that and, you know, what, you know, the way we were and they would have had that golden opportunity given to them by the devil, Satan, the god of this world, to go back. So it's a selfless thing to forget about the past. You know, Christianity, if you want to use that word, or better still, being a disciple of Christ is a selfless thing. Selfless. We're going to have a look at that in the main meaning, uh, main message today. Israel. They were uh, sticklers for looking back on the steaks and the leeks and the mushrooms, weren't they? And the gravy. They, they were sticklers for looking back onto the high top whole grain loaves, multi grain even. They looked back and got themselves into a lot of trouble with God. Hey, God is not ashamed of those who, when they when they come to him, they look to forget the past. Forget it. Forget what happened. Don't even bother about it. Because if you start considering it, the devil's going to get a foothold and drag you back. Satan is far more powerful than any human. But our power and strength is in him. Hey? In the Christ. And that power will not manifest or be uh, available to us unless we are on that one particular road walking in the light, hey? Walking in the light of his word. And let's also go to John 19, 28, and we'll see victory here too. Because what I just read to you was victory. You know, when... The servant's heart departs, we take on that 
Luciferian look, don't we? We take on that satanic attitude, selfish. I'm going to run the show. The servant's heart departs and the anointing and that power that God gives his people to walk in his way just lives when we get selfish. Yeah? So, let's go to the writings of uh, John 19. John chapter 19. I'll read a couple of verses there. John 19. And I'm going to read verse 28. 28. John 19, 28. Which says, my Bible... After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on his, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he, he said, it is finished, bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Hey? Accomplished it all. Hey? He's accomplished it all and he said it is finished. So we have great confidence to know that we're not going to start any drama. We're, we're going to be obedient and behave ourselves. We're not going to start anything. It's already finished. The whole thing. The whole thing. It's like Brother Moses' testimony recently. Brother Moses Garcia Ten years in an Assembly of God church. He said even more. When Brother Moses came here, I thought he was uh, 12 months or 18 months in a, an Assembly of God church or something and things weren't working out. Ten years plus. He'd go to church drunk, he'd be eyeballing the, the, um, the gals, blah, blah, blah. In the flesh, full on. Walking around the street, screaming and yelling, drunk. Just playing up in general. Ten years, no deliverance, no power. He heard the full gospel, right? Heard the full counsel, the full story. That's what I'm reading here in, in John 19. I'm reading the full story in, in a few verses. The full counsel in a few verses. Paul elaborates, Peter elaborates on this and gives the elaboration of, 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 of the full counsel yeah it's finished see everything's been accomplished you're not going to go out and accomplish anything or he's an accomplished speaker you know what i mean what did he accomplish and everything we got was given to us no one can claim anything <laughs> and john 12 let's go there john 12 and then we go in to the main message john 12 23 says the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified most assuredly i say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies remains alone it but if it dies it produces much grain right let's read on he who loves his life will lose it and he who hates his life in this life will keep it for eternity. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honour. Wow. The honour of father. Oh, I mean, that's pretty big stuff, isn't it? That's pretty big honour. But the grain of wheat must fall into the ground and die. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. It can't produce anything. We're not going to produce any characteristic fruits of the Christ. They're, people are not going to see Christ in you, brother. People are not going to see Christ in you if we don't die daily. They're just going to see some religious person who's robotic in manner but still loves the world you know they're dry dry worldlings you know what a dry drunk is don't you that's a drunk that don't drink they're worse than than a wet drunk 
A dry drunk is worse than a drunk that sloshed. They're terrible. A dry junkie. They're off the needle. They're off the, the acid. They're, they're, they're off the, 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 the coochie coo. But they're not delivered. There has to be a death. And we're going to go into that very soon. John 16. Let's go there. And one verse and then we'll be right. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. Why? Because Jesus has already overcome. Jesus has, it's finished, it's accomplished. Fall into the ground and die. Face plant today in the name of Jesus. Eh? Free fall into the soil. <laughs> Let the Lord break your teeth on the rocks. Jeremiah breaking the teeth on the gravel. Yeah? So... We're going to the message today and we're going to be reading out of Corinthians. Paul's writings. Lovely, beautiful, Paul the Apostle. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Only got six verses there, but that should be enough to keep us in the zenith. Amen? Well, actually, one verse in 1 Corinthians 4, 1. Let a man so consider us as servants of the Christ and as stewards, stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human Court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to the light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of everyone's heart, then... Each one's praise will come from God. Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively, figuratively transferred to myself and, and Apollos for your sakes that you may learn in and from us not to even think beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up and become arrogant on behalf of one another, against one another. Don't even think. But the churches in the world today, they're not just thinking, they're doing. Beyond what is written. They even teach. There, is other th there are other things beyond what is written. There are other books. Maybe the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith, Ellen G. White. Hey, Worldwide Church of God, Armstrong, all kinds of Jesuit writings and the apparitions of the mythical Mary and all kinds of... Oh, this is the original... I have a Roman Catholic fellow who's forever annoying me, really terrible. It's annoying to no end. But I butt up and use it to my advantage and the kingdom's advantage by sucking it up and letting the Lord do a work in me with his annoying way. And he keeps blabbing on about, oh, well, Paul, you really need to go into history and... And you need to get the original text in the Greek, in the Hebrew. Ooh. 
And I emailed him last night. I said, listen, mate, the bottom line is this. History is unreliable, it's flawed, and elusive. However, I am guided faithfully by the Spirit of God himself, John 16, 13. And when he comes, the help of the paraclete, he will guide you to the Hebrew or the Greek or the original. No, he will guide you into all truth. Someone can say amen if you want to. Yeah? So <clears throat> we're going to be working today with verse 4 in 1 Corinthians 4. 4 For I know nothing. Powerful. This is... This is very powerful against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Christ. Wow. Hey? But yet we have a Calvinistic teaching allowed into the doors of buildings called churches. We have a teaching that blasphemes established canon. We have a teaching that says that Paul, let's read it, was doing things that he didn't want to do. Let's go to the writings of Romans 7 and read it for ourselves. 19. Romans 7, 19. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. You're listening today. Now, come on. Does that sound like a converted man? Does that sound like a, a power-packed apostle? Now, that sounds like a man that doesn't even know God. That sounds like a powerless, defeated man. Can someone say amen? amen. Yes. So, the title of our message today is Do you know anything? Do you know anything about you? Do you know anything? I love the way Paul writes. I love the way Paul puts things. He really does imitate crimes because he puts the ball on in everyone's side of the court every time he opens his mouth. <laughs> Paul is not condemning. Paul is not putting people down. Jesus never come to condemn the sinner. He come to save them. Hey? Right? Yeah, and this scripture, an apostle of the Christ, I believe the premium, the premier apostle of the Christ, Paul, says very clearly, I know nothing against myself. He always talked about himself and his walk. But yet we just read in Romans 7.19... Hey? That the things I don't want to do, I do. And the things I want to do, I can't do. Is that right? Yes. Do you know anything against yourself? That's what we, as people of God, need to look at. We need to, to make sure that our walk is right with the Christ all the time that we walk circumspect before the Lord because things are hotting up all over the world and we see the signs of the times before us everywhere, everywhere. The way Paul puts it, he's not, he's not condemning anyone. He's, he's saying... 
This is my attitude and this is my concept of uh, being a disciple of Christ and being saved and saved to the uttermost. This is the criteria of, uh, uh, of, of salvation itself in the end. Will you know anything against yourself? Because if you do, you can be assured Christ does. Hey? And the Lord wants to present us spotless, without blemish, without wrinkle, knowing nothing against ourselves. As Paul the Apostle said, let's turn in our Bibles, please to 1 John, 1 John. Do you know anything? Look, if we know anything at all, we know it's not one side or one side. We know Calvinism is the doctrine from hell. Hey? We go to 1, 1 John, chapter 3, and... I really want to put this rubbish, absolute predestination to bed once and for all with this message. I believe I can by the power of God. I believe I can. 1 John chapter 3, 18. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts, shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. You see that verse 20 there? This is the love of God. The power of God and the love of God towards God. His people. For if our heart condemns us, God is even greater than our heart. And I'm looking at that, and then I'm looking at 1 Corinthians 4 4. I know nothing against myself. See? God knows everything. I know nothing against myself. Yet I am not justified by this. Paul always exalted Christ for who he was, God. Always humbled himself. Hey? Always humbled himself and said, but Jesus is the judge. Yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. So, if we as followers of Jesus, if our heart condemns us, the scripture clearly says, God is greater than the heart. If we're feeling condemned over something that we have no knowledge about. Are you listening today? I know uh, over 26 years ministry, I've come across people and Christians who are condemning themselves over things that are not theirs. They don't know. Hey? They don't know that uh, that is not a, a, a required of them. Are you listening? Hey? Paul said, I don't know anything against myself. Jesus is the judge. And then John says, if your heart condemns you, if you are untrained in the word and, and don't have the full knowledge and the full counsel, hey? Brother Moses was wandering around, backslidden, and he was saying, oh, oh, you know, oh, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this dungeon. Does it really have to be like this? But then he came across the full counsel. See? He don't feel that way no more. Hey? He doesn't live in that sin no more. 
The things he does not want to do, he don't do. And the things he wants to do, he now does. But he never had that power before to do the things that he wanted to do, which was to fellowship faithfully and loyally and honestly and, and, and dis distribute the message of Christ on the streets and go out there and be a uh, resurrected representative of the Christ. He never had that power before till he got the full counsel, that knowledge. He never had that peace because he never had that knowledge. I can, I can go free. It doesn't have to be like this. Amen. Can you say amen, amen. today? Yes. So 1 Corinthians 4, 1. Let a man or let the world or people consider us, Apollos and, and him and the other apostles, as servants, as stewards, as faithful. Hey? As servants, stewards of what? It doesn't say let, let, let human beings and let men and women consider us as good businessmen or as successful people. Hey? No. Servants of God, stewards. He, he mentions one particular thing here. Stewards of the mysteries. No money mentioned there, is there? Stewards of the mysteries of God. Of the spiritual things. Faithful stewards of the spiritual things. Of God's things. Hey? Faithful. Paul the Apostle, he said, if we go to Corinthians, Paul the Apostle said... Very clearly, and I love this verse, and 1 Corinthians, hallelujah. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians. Better still make it 2 Corinthians. Sorry about that. And then we'll go over to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 2, verse 17. For we are not as so many peddling, selling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. You see that? He was speaking in the sight of God. He wasn't selling the word. He wasn't peddling the word. It was sincere. Paul was a man of great conscience, very sincere, servant at heart, steward of the spiritual things, the greatest, the greatest blessings that a, a human can give to another human. Right? Faithful in that. Paul's faithfulness was shown by his full counsel, holding Nothing back but letting the people have it all free of charge. Never shunning to proclaim the full counsel of the Lord. Can someone say amen? amen. So let's go to Romans chapter 7 once again. And we'll start to get into the meat of this message. And where many people have gone wrong. In the churches and in the pulpit. Romans 7, 19 says, For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. When we're born again of the Spirit of God. When we receive the full counsel. He makes sure, he says, the evil I don't want to do, he doesn't just do it, he practices it. <laughs> Does that sound like a bloke that can't help himself? That sounds like a willful sinner. That doesn't sound like a saint. 
And then, this is a cruncher. This one, the devil has used for an escape hatch for multitudes of churchgoers and ministers. Romans 7, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Hey? Now, have a look at that. And many think, oh, well, you know, that's that, like that schizophrenic Christian, isn't it? They're, they're you know, the de facto Christian. Hey? That I'm still serving the Lord, but with my mind, you know? And the flesh is reserved for the devil. You know? That is not born again. That is not. And Paul was a good law server, wasn't he? But he wasn't saved when he was, oh, Pharisee of Pharisees. Hey? He, of the tribe of Benjamin. Hey? Circumcised on the eighth day. Huh? Trained by Gamaliel. Hey? He had the lot. He had it all there. But was he free? No, he was still running around, not just doing evil, practicing it. Hey? But look at this. There's only two things in this equation in 25 Romans 7. He talks about the mind. He talks about the flesh. And then he talks about himself and then he talks about law. Well, none of that is going to deliver you. None of that. The mind won't deliver you. The, 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 myself can't deliver me. The law can't deliver me. The flesh can't deliver me. So who's going to deliver me? Well, he goes on to say, doesn't he? Hey? Paul the Apostle says, Thanks be unto God, doesn't he? Who always causes us to triumph through our Lord Jesus. Always. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Hey? So... The mind, the mind, we, we're not asked to serve God with our mind. We're, go on, the new covenant doesn't say that. Eh? I believe the doctrine of absolute predestination, I firmly believe by the confidence given to me, by the Holy Ghost, that the doctrine of absolute predestination, salvation by election, once saved, always saved, is a doctrine of the mind. I really, it's a solic doctrine. I, it's an unconverted invention and concoction of, of compromising, lukewarm theologians or I think we better just say logians because <laughs> God ain't in the equation, is he? Let's have a look again. See if God's in. Romans 7, 25. I thank God. Oh, he's thanking God that he's letting him off the hook. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind, the mind, myself, Serve the law. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Well, you know what? We're not under the law of sin and we're not under the law. We're under power. We're under grace. Hey? And we are, much more is required of us because we have the power of the Holy Ghost. We have the very spirit of of God installed, indwelling, 
Can someone say amen, hey? Look, we must be faithful. It's not faithful to tell people that you can you, you can love the Lord in your mind and then and, and, and then love the devil with your flesh. That is not the message of Jesus, is it? Is that faithful? I tell you what, it's a mystery to me that anyone could believe it. It's sort of like amazing grace, isn't it? You know what I mean? It is amazing. It's just one big maze that you will never get out of. It's called hell. <laughs> amazing hell. What landed me here? Some unfaithful minister landed you there. And, and, and don't just give him a belting either because he was the one that led you there. You're the one that put your hand out to him and said, lead me on. Hey? Sweet chariot. <laughs> Amazing is the grace. Hey? That sound. Hey, that sound. 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 Look, if amazing sounds can save you, Jesus wouldn't have to have accomplished anything. He wouldn't have had to finish anything. He wouldn't have to 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 uh, 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 die on a cross, be buried in a grave, and rise from the dead, would he? I mean, you, when you see what Jesus done from day dot, it, there's a lot in it, isn't there? And the beatings and the whole corn praetorium and, 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 and the carry on with Mary and at the temple and what do you want, woman, you know? And that's no way to speak to the mother of God. <laughs> when Mary said, where have you been? Jesus? And Jesus turned around and said, what's it to you, woman? I'm about father's business. Is that, the, is that the way to speak to the, the God of, uh, the mother of God? Oh, come on, please. Hey, leave me, leave me alone. Hey. Verse 4 says to me in 1 Corinthians 4, 4, no known sin. No, perfect in the eyes of God. Up to the light he had. That's what that says to me. For I know nothing against myself. Romans 7, 24 says, O wretched man, O sinner that I am. <laughs> a wretch is a sinner. That's not a saint. A sinner is not a saint. I mean, I think that's, that's a no-brainer. Romans 7, 24. O sinful man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Well, we, we read before, didn't we, about what to do with the body? Unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. Is that right? Oh, let's go over to Galatians. Hey? Better still, before we go there, we'll just stop along the way. And in Romans 8. Verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors in debt no more to the flesh to live according to its demands. For if you live according to the demands of your flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body that are ungodly, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to sin and to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption which cries out to Father when you need help. In the name of Jesus. For the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, if, Romans 8, 17, halfway through, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Can someone say amen? amen. Hey? Oh, look, this absolute predestination, it has to go. It, it's the doctrine of the devil. Concoction of degenerated and, and, and compromised, lukewarm, religious people. Hey? Just the ologies of men. <laughs> it's not a theology. Theo meaning God. In the Greek, yeah? No, it's an ology. Hey? It's just an ology. So, let's go to Jude. Hallelujah. Hey? Do you know anything? If you know anything... Against yourself, you best to deal with it now because Jesus is coming. For I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. This is not the end of it because Jesus is going to judge me. But I don't know anything against myself. I have no knowledge of it. I don't know of any known sin up to the light and the knowledge of Christ that I have as a servant and a steward of the mysteries of God. Someone say amen. amen. So Jude, Jude says in verse 22, And on some have compassion, making distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Jude 24. There's only one chapter in Jude, brother. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Saviour, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. He is able, isn't he? It's an availability. Are you available to allow him to be able to present you without a fault? Oh, no such thing. That's, that, 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 that's a pipe dream. That's not real. That's not, that's not the Bible. We all sin and we all live in sin and we can't go free. We're just bound. The things I don't want to do, I do. And the evil that, that uh, I don't want to do, I practice. Not just do, practice. But yeah, we read that those who sin are of the devil, don't we? So it's getting a little bit confusing, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not confusing because we have the Holy Ghost. And he erases all confusion if our heart is to do Father's will. John 17, John 7, 17. If you desire to do Father's will, he will show you the doctrine of the Christ. He will show you the true teaching. Jesus is my doctrine. And my doctrine is Jesus and the banner over me. His love. Jesus is my saviour. My saviour is Jesus. Banner over me is love. Come on now. Jesus is my God. And my God is Jesus. The banner over me is love. Oh yes, the banner over me is his love. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Can you say amen? 
Let's go to Peter. 1 Peter 1. One Peter one. One Peter chapter one. Do you know anything? I know nothing against myself. One Peter one. The verse is five. We are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Kept by the power of God. Not by law, not by the flesh, not by the mind. Faith. And not just as absolute predestination as read 1 Peter 1.5, oh, I'm kept by the power of God. No, you're not. You're kept by the power of God. Through faith on your behalf. Faith obedience. Yeah? Remember I said before that uh, about the mind. I serve in God with the mind. Not good enough. Not good enough. That, you, that is not the covenant. Let's go to Matthew 22. Oh, Hallelujah. We want the full counsel, don't we? So we can go free like Brother Moses. When I heard the full counsel, I thought, hey, it doesn't have to be like this, Brother Moses. <laughs> I, I can go free. I don't have to be drunk eight days a week. I, I don't have to be cursing and swearing and brawling and living in hatred and resentment. I don't have to be like that. I can go free. I don't have, the evil that I, 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 I don't want to do, I do and practice. I don't have to do that anymore. It's good news week. You don't have to live in sin anymore. <laughs> Matthew 22 and 37. You shall love the Lord thy God with your mind. Now let's read verse 38. No, that doesn't say that, does it? With all your heart. With all your soul and strength. You're listening. Your heart, soul, strength. Spirit, soul and body. Not just the soul. That's just headspace, isn't it? The, in the soul is the mind, the will and the emotions. And you're not going to be willing if you're just a sole operator. Come on. You're not going to be willing. Your spirit has to be subjected to Christ. Your heart. We must have a loyal heart toward God. The Lord eyes go to and fro across the earth looking for the righteous, that he may show himself strong on the behalf of the loyal. Those who are loyal to him. That's the new covenant, to love him. It's not about some mindset. It's all in the mind. Luke six forty six. Why do you call me Lord but you don't do? What I say. Do not love in word, but in deed. See, in the mind. That's a John 3.16 thing, isn't it? Oh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I called out, hey, Jesus, I must be saved. Amazing grace. How sweet the joy that save. Oh, well, I do love Jesus, you know. I've slipped again. Don't break. I've slipped again. <laughs> Are we all... We all make mistakes. 
Yeah. But we just read he's able to keep us from stumbling. Present us faultless. Oh, but I serve the Lord with my mind. <laughs> I serve the Lord with my mind, you know. Mind you, saying that. Now with all your, all your heart, spirit, deepest part of the human, the spirit, the heart, with all your soul, mind, will and emotions, and with your strength, your flesh, yeah, that's, your strength is your flesh, God's strength is his spirit, yeah, not by might, not by your flesh or your strength, but by my spirit. It's not by mine. It's not my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hey, that's what he said to the rubber bubble, didn't he? Hey? I know nothing against myself, not just the mind, not just the mind. Let's read that, let's read that. Let's go to Romans again, we've got to get this sorted, once and for all. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind, oh that's no good thinking about it, we've got to be doers. Romans 7.25 I serve the law of God with my mind. You know, when the Spirit of God comes into our lives, we serve the Lord with spirit, soul and body. Paul is talking about his apostleship here in, in 1 Corinthians 4 and, and in the previous chapter, he in uh, chapter 2 and 3, talking about <clears throat> the wisdom of God, and we are the temple of God. How can you serve the law of sin and be the temple of God? Let's read it. Romans 8.1 There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to to the spirit, and here it is, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Come on now. The law of the spirit. And then you got the law of sin. Hey? The end of the law of sin is death. The end of the law of the Spirit is life, eternal life. We walk after the Spirit, we live for eternity. We walk after sin, we die eternally in a living blackness and darkness and fire of eternal hell. Let's read it. For the law of the Spirit... 25 is talking about the law. Serve the law of God with his mind. But now he's talking about the law of the spirit that set, his, set him free. The law of the spirit of life in the Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Let's read it. Now he talks about Jesus coming. In verse 3, Romans 7, uh, 8, 3. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. Listen. God did. Through Jesus. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On the account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. He was a propitiation for our sin. Now we're in Christ. 
Romans 8, 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. In who? Who do not walk according to the flesh. The righteous requirement of the law fulfilled and completed if we don't walk in the flesh. But according to the leading of the Holy Spirit who will lead you no other way except in the truth. Because Father is looking for those who will worship Him, glorify Him, praise Him, In spirit and truth. In the, being led by the Holy Ghost and by walking in the truth. You listening? Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse 6, Romans 8. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life, brother, and peace. See that? Life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at war with God. For it is not subjected and submitted to the law of God, nor indeed can it ever be. So those who walk in the flesh cannot please God. Hey? I know nothing against myself, Paul the Apostle said. But Jesus at the end of the day will judge. But he had a clean heart. He was right with God. He had no known sin. We've totally cancelled out Romans 7, 19. Paul was not a practiser of evil. Saul was. Romans 7, 19. The good that I will to do, I do not. Not I can't. I just don't do it. I don't have the heart to do it. I don't have the spirit to do it. You with me? This is the Pharisee. They don't have the heart to do good. But the evil I, I don't want to do, that I practice. I practice. And what did the Lord say to those who come to him in the, in the, oh Lord, Lord. He says, go away from me, you who are of absolute predestination. You who practice Lawlessness. Are you with me? Is that what Jesus said? Go away from me. Let's read it in Matthew. Go away from me. Many will come on that day. Many will come on that day and say, Lord, Lord. Let's read it in Matthew 24, verse 36. But of the day and the hour when Jesus will come, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but only Father knows. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and God shut the door. Matthew 24, 39, and did not know until the flood came. And took them away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Hey? Eh? Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women 
will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour of the Lord's coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known the hour, the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at the hour when you do not expect. Hey? Now, that scripture I'm looking for is... Where the Lord says, go away from me, when they cry out, Lord, Lord. Go away from me, I know you not. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7, 21. But he who does the will. Oh, Father, in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, they will start to call me Lord. Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and we've done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who are of the absolute predestination doctrine. You who practice evil. Lawlessness is evil. You listening? I'm, re I'm relating Matthew 7, 23 with Romans 7, 19. I'm asking you to consider those two together, side by side, practice. The evil I didn't want to do, I practiced. He didn't do, he practiced. And these practice lawlessness. It's not, it's not the, the law of the spirit to tell people it's not the law of the Spirit to tell people that you just can't help it. You're going to have to go on in that sin. Because Jesus come to set the captive free. Amen. He come to set us free. And if the Son of God has set you free, free you'll be indeed. You wouldn't be just worshipping the Lord with your mind. It'll be spirit, soul and body. Know ye not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, spirit, soul, and body, with all your heart, soul, and strength. How can we expect to be saved if we do otherwise? How can we, we lie to the congregation and the people and say, Paul the Apostle was a sinner? Paul the Apostle, even though he was a sinner, we teach the people, oh, he was a sinner, but he said, I kept the fight and I ran the race and I fought the fight. But I still serve the law of sin. But I, uh, Jesus, i got a spot in my mind. I think about him now and then, you know, maybe at the Santee season or around Easter you know, when I'm driving down the road and I see all those religious hypocrites out there with their crosses sweating in the sun and the wheel on their cross. That wheel on that cross. You know, someone coming alongside with that bottle of water and all that tomato sauce on the forehead of, of that... Pretend Jesus with that deed that he bought at Kmart in the costume section. Hello. I know nothing against myself. Not one sin. Paul said. And what did he say? Imitate me. As I imitate the Christ. I don't have one, I don't even know of one sin. 
You will not end up in hell because of unknown sin. But known sin, yes. I know nothing against myself. But I'll humble myself even more and say, well, maybe the Lord can find something. But I don't know about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> he leaves the ball on everyone's side of the court, doesn't he? Hey? Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to finish up now in the writings of Corinthians. Let's just go to Corinthians there. We go to 1 Corinthians. Oh, better still, 2 Corinthians, sorry. 2 Corinthians 13, I'm going to finish up on this oracle. Verse 5. And this message goes out all over the world. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Prove yourself. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you have become disqualified from running the race of faith. And I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but, I, that, but that you should... Do what is honourable, though we may seem seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. I give you all the glory, Jesus, today for this reminder and warning. I give you all the glory. When you come, Lord, you will open the hearts, you will open the darkness, and everything will be made bare. And you will judge Jesus in righteousness and in holiness. And not one stone will be left unturned in any man or woman's life. Can someone say amen? amen. Paul fought the fight, ran the race, kept the fight. I know nothing. What's the absolute predestination are going to say there? I know nothing against myself. He said, I'm walking in the light and the spirit to the degree where I don't even have to examine myself. 1 Corinthians 4, 3, But with me it is a very small thing that I shall be judged by you or by any human or any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. Because I have nothing against. I have no conviction of anything. And everybody said, amen. and amen, and amen.